Okay, this is going to be a different video than I'm usually normally doing. Uh, this one's going to be on an uh, electronics hobby uh, known as programming a microcontroller. And a microcontroller is a very small device. Um, that's the smallest one I can find right now because it's nice and simple. And it has um, eight little metal legs on it. And it's um, something that people can do as a hobby, um, programming these things. And it's basically com uh, programming a computer with um, a computer language and then installing it into a project. Um, you might not find this too interesting if you're not into electronics, so you might want to skip over this video. But I will go briefly through how to do that in your most basic program. And then that way, from there, most people, after they've built one project, they can build much more complicated ones. But usually just getting started to build one simple project is a struggle. So I'm going to try and walk um, somebody through how to do this properly. Um, in this example, I'm just going to turn a little LED or a light on and off repetitively over and over just so that we can see that our software and our hardware are all working together to make everything work. Um, there's a little resistor on here and an LED and a little microcontroller, which is a computer basically in a chip and it'll have some batteries attached to it. I will have um, four AA batteries attached to the project so that it will run on battery power. Uh, what else can, okay, so uh, this is from Microchip. I think I explained that before. Microchip does sell a variety of chips, everything from this little guy down here, all the way up to ones that have like 100 pins and they have a lot of different things you can do with them, a lot more than this little chip. But um, as it is, this little chip can do a lot of different things. It has a hundred pages of information right here. Uh, this is a free download from Microchip, and it's basically a PIC12F675 data sheet because this is a PIC12F675, and it's an eight-bit uh, microcontroller. Is what we have here. And briefly, I'll explain what a this little chip here in particular will do and that's inside this this download there is um and basically a, um uh, information on what it will do which will include things like um it can be an analog to digital converter or a digital to analog converter or an operational amplifier or a comparator or just purely digital output um they also do things like a serial communications device uh, it has like a thousand bytes of memory, uh, 64 bytes of RAM, and a whole bunch of EEPROM, six I.O. ports. So obviously, if there's one, two, two pins being used for your power, five volts and ground, the other six pins are used for I.O. So you can do a variety of things with that. And I'm simply going to use one of the pins to make this light go on and off. So the way it works is you program on your computer. I'm using a Windows 10 based computer and I'm using this little programmer called the PicKit 3 I also got from Microchip. And it connects through a USB port to uh, program this chip. I simply plug this chip here into this little, it's not very bright here, it's kind of dim. Um, and I plug this into this uh, breadboard actually. So uh, this here is my little sandwiched um, development platform. So I have my PicKit 3, the red thing here, uh, glued onto a string of batteries, which is also glued onto a little breadboard here. And I, I plug this into my computer, obviously, as I mentioned, and I program it. So simply put this here, um, PicKit 3, has six little uh, pinouts right here starting from the little white triangle and I hook that onto my chip using wires uh, and as you can see over here for instance there's um, six pins as mentioned in the pick kit three and each one plugs into a different pin on this little tiny microcontroller and it's for instance pick kit pinout one goes to the pin four on this chip right here and pin two from the pick kit goes to pin one all the way down to whatever we have. So there's five wires actually, not six. The sixth one is not used. 
I also plug in five volts from this battery pack, like so. Yeah, you wish you had a pair of glasses on. <laughs> um, anyhow, so I, I add an extra five volts so it, it will program. And then I plug it right into the, um, the USB port, which goes into my computer and it's ready to program. Um, just let me get that in there. So that little chip, as mentioned, it has um, eight pins. That's the information right there. And as mentioned, uh, pin one is five volts. Pin eight is ground. And there are the other six pins that can be used for whatever you want. In which case we're actually gonna use, um, uh, we'll use pin three for our output. And we'll output a, a high and a low to turn on and off a LED. And that's actually called GP4 or um, general purpose register four, which is related to a bit in a register somewhere. And I'll explain that a little later. So right here, this entire 100 pages of information is all you need. And uh, right here, it tells you something that's quite interesting. Uh, these microcontrollers run on something called a banking method. So there's two banks in this particular microcontroller. Uh, very basic, by the way. And bank zero, which is this one right here, has a whole bunch of registers that you can do things with in order to make that chip work. And bank one has the same thing, a whole bunch of registers. And they're, most of them are different than each other. So uh, the registers in bank zero for the most part are different than the registers in bank one. Um, but that's not totally true. Some are identical, like for instance, the, the general purpose registers or your memory that you usually use for um, file registers are all identical. And there's about f uh, 64 of them. Yeah, there you go, 64. And there's also a few other ones up here, like, um, oh, I don't know, like the status register I see is the same. Um, and uh, more, anyhow, this is more detailed instruction on, on bank zero registers. And this would be more detailed instruction on bank one registers. And if you want to know even more detailed information about those registers, you'll see down here at the end of something like, um, let's say register 84 in bank one, uh, bank one, where does it say that? Right there. Uh, you would go over to page 18 and you could read up on it and know more about what's happening on, on that particular register. But in general, um, I'll, I'll tell you what we're going to do with this program to make that little light flash. Um, we're going to first start off, run over to bank one and program our IO port so that we can have an output pin on that um, particular pin that we want to have the LED on. And that little out, uh, output pin is controlled by, or that IO port is controlled by register five on bank one. So what I do is I can select either a zero to allow that bank or that bit to be an output or a, a one on that bit for that out, uh, pin to be an input. So you can enter into register five, a number that will allow which pins to be input or output. In which case I'm going to make all of the pins output. So I'm simply going to clear this register to zero, which will allow every out, every pin to be an output. Then I'm going to run over to bank zero, where I'm going to do most of my program. And I'm going to go to register five which is now my IO port. And I will be um, putting a high and a low on that pin. Was it, did I say four? Yeah, on pin, on, on, on bit four, which is actually <laughs> pin three on this register. Uh, you know, I'll show you this quickly. Um, you can see, as I mentioned, uh, pin three right here. If you notice, it's called GP4, which is bit, for in that register, even though it's on pin 
three. It's just the way it's laid out. So I'll be putting a high and a low on that pin on that register or that or the IO port and turning on and off this little light. I will also do a delay between the on and offs because these little um, microcontrollers run quite fast in comparison to the real world. Uh, well, well, not so fast compared to maybe a, a full blown computer like a laptop, but they run pretty fast. So this will be doing about a million instructions per second, which means that when I request it to throw a, a, a high onto that LED, it does that in a millionth of a second. And then a low, it turn it off within a millionth of a second. And if I was to just do a steady on and off, it'd be so fast at a millionth of a second, you would not see it, it'd be a blur. So I'm gonna create a delay um, using what they call a nested loop, using some registers down here in the general purpose registers. And I will create that delay to maybe do mm, a quarter of a second or a half a second of time delay uh, between the highs and the lows. And that's basically the whole program. Uh, just here, I'll simply show you, I'm using assembler or assembly language. So this, this manual that you get, you only need one manual. You only need one download, 100 pages, and you can figure out how to work these things. You don't need anything else. Um, this manual has everything from um, what the <laughs> what the chip looks like, its dimensions, and what kind of voltages they want on the chip pins, uh, what kind of um, temperatures it can handle, waveforms, a lot of stuff. I honestly, I haven't read most of this manual. Um, even how much amperage it drains in certain applications if you're using an internal oscillator, which we will do. I, I don't think we'll use an external oscillator because an external oscillator, which is like a crystal or an RC oscillator, will take up two pins. And I don't want to do that. I want just internal oscillator so I have six pins to be used for input output. And um, what do we have here? Oh yeah, so this is um, the entirety of what's needed to know assembler. There's like five pages here, maybe maybe six, I don't know, there's not that many. But it works in the way that assembler is a very simple language. By the way, you can program these in C, which is a higher level language. But I like assembler because it's so simple, I can pick it up after not using it for a year. It's so simple, there's only 35 instructions to know. Right there, those 35. And over here, it goes in a bit more detail what those instructions do. So for instance, we'll be using, um, oh, we'll be using bit clear file register and bit set file register, which simply sets or well clears or sets one single bit in a file register. And in which case it's going to be for us um, setting and clearing bit four in file register five, which is the um, IO port, right? And we will be doing um, a call um, a call routine, basically it calls a mnemonic, it calls a, um, a label and which will have um, our delay loop in there. And there's always a return after a call so that the, pro the program will go back to where it once was and continue on. Uh, we'll clear file register, we'll... Um, what else? We'll decrement a file register and skip if zero. And that's an interesting instruction. We'll use a go-to statement. Um, we'll use a move file register, move literal into file register, move w. Yeah, we'll use a, a handful of these things. There's that return. That was it. That's all the instructions we're going to use. There's, um, like I say, 35, but anyhow. Um, Okay, we have a very affordable hobby. The programmer is 40 bucks. The chips are about a buck, somewhere between a buck and maybe a buck 50. If you want to get one that has like a hundred legs, it could be like $5. It's still very cheap. Um, it's just more complicated. It has a thousand pages instead of a hundred. So you have to do a little bit more reading, but it does a lot more. And um, let's see if I can get this camera pointing up to where the software part of it all happens. Uh, okay, let's get it up here. 
sorry for the archaic method of um <laughs> there we go that's roughly where i want it um, yeah okay so um that's my that's my computer screen and my windows 10 computer this also works on apple and i think uh, linux as well so um there's one piece of software i downloaded only one it's free and it's from microchip as well and it's this one right here it's the uh mp lab xide version 5.2 don't go out there and download the latest version apparently they're more designed for c if you're into c that's great but we're going to do assembler and assembler is much easier for me and it might be for you as well so going to get version 5.2 or maybe even 5.3 but most people suggest that 5.2 is the best version for assembler when you're working with microchip it's about a 700 megabyte download and uh, it's in the archives by the way you go to the microchip archives when you want to get that version of 5.20 one download one program you don't need three programs just the one to do this okay if you go up to version six you might need two or three separate pieces of software uh, very frustrating but yes this is a very easy uh, platform to work with and you will not be disappointed if you enjoy a simplistic programming method okay so anyhow this oh yeah by the way when i download this software i did not unclick or click any extra boxes on the download so i take it as is and um, this is the way it's running so there's no tweaks that i did to the software simply as is downloaded this is your start page um it's just um they're trying to sell some things and get your email so you can click out of there and not use that uh, this is usually a split screen like this you can see the split screen has um, a section down here i just you can lift it up or lower it down there's usually a bit more information here um, for a variety of things but we're going to start off and just build one simple program it's going to have 10 or 12 lines on it it's not going to be too complicated and let's let me just grab my little notes here so what you do to start off is you go to file and you type out or you select new project standalone project next and since i am working with a a microchip um, 12f675 i'm going to type that in 12f675 and whatever you had for a chip you would type that in as well um, the difference between the programming between the two will maybe be significant so you want to um, maybe <laughs> follow along with this exact chip okay um, i'm not going to use the debug header so i'm just going to go to next and there is my pick kit 3 right there my little programmer that red thing click next and here's the assembler um, compiler it's a mp asm next and i need a project name i'm gonna call it um test something so why don't i just call it test 17. so you could call it anything you want next so i go over here and this is my my uh, folders for my test 17 project and i go to the source files here i i left click and then i right click here and i select an, um, a new assembly file dot asm i need a file name and guess what i'm going to use test 17. There you go. I think, and I'm only saying this just from memory, I usually never put any spaces in here. There was a problem with the earlier um, development platforms where if you put a space in there, it sometimes did not register the file properly. Uh, so I never put spaces or anything beyond alphanumeric information there. Anyhow, um, finish. I'm ready to go. So with um, these um, versions of um, the development platform you usually have to configure your uh, your bits on your uh, your chip first so what that means is 
your chip actually can run a variety of different ways and things like um, whether you wanted the internal or external oscillator or if you want to run a faster internal oscillator or a slower one there's a variety of things that you can do including code protection and data protection that we're going to go through and alter before we even start programming so over in production here go down to uh, set configuration bits so down here i'm just going to lift this window up a little tiny bit i'm going to lift this window up just a tiny little bit and this is all of the attributes that we just have to change right here i usually turn everything off for simplicity on a basic program so for instance it's asking about the oscillator right here i'm going to ask i'm going to say i want an internal rc oscillator nice and simple with um, all of the uh, free pins to be um, digital io now down here they also ask things like do you want the, um, the watchdog timer on or off i'm turning everything off uh, just to keep things nice and simple and you know you can read up on these things and decide whether you want them on or off at your discretion but that's the way it is so, um, with mine i'm just internal oscillator everything else off the internal oscillator is running four megahertz in this um, chip i can change it if i wanted but right now we're just running it simple four megahertz it'll crunch code at a million pieces of code in one second i generate my source code using this button down here and i get a whole pile of stuff here now i don't actually need all of this stuff i'm going to actually grab some of it um, some of it is remarks and for me you know i'm making a simple video i'm not going to make it complicated i'm going to cut that out or copy that out and paste it up here um, paste sweet okay so this is code for the compiler to tell it how to run i actually you can do this one of several ways um, you need this piece of code here it's essential I don't need these remarks here. I can delete them um, and keep this remark right here and actually the interesting thing is if I want between this green just here, uh, between that green remark right there or this blue and pink remark I can keep one or the other it does not matter uh, for the coding I will choose to keep um, this green one and I'll simply get rid of I don't know tell you what I'll keep this one right here this piece right here and I'll get rid of this one just because it is quite useful in explaining what I've done with my configuration bits so I'm leaving that code right there um, let me just um, I'll move it away from my other code that I'm going to be putting on so they're all kind of stacked together up there with no spaces depends on how you like your code to look okay so I'm going to get rid of this uh, split window or at least pull it down and we'll start to program our code right here so with this um, chip or this program I mean we're going to first do one other statement to the compiler and we're going to tell it that our origin of our code and I believe I'm going to just do an origin of zero that's where I want my code to start um, in my chip I don't want it to start way over in memory bank 100 or whatever I'm going to shift all this code over here because I want to leave some spaces for a label in this section right here so um, I'm going to start my code right here and I'm going to give a bit space between all of this uh, stuff here and my program which will be very simple by the way the program is not complicated because it's such a simple little LED flashing on and off anyhow um, I'll, I'll explain what I'm doing briefly and I'll just type out first because sometimes typing and talking is not my skill set and I will just run through a little bit of code and explain what I've done here all right sure is quiet all right so what I've done here is um, a bit set file register 035 which is basically going to file register 
3 and setting the bit 5 on that to a high. What that does is that changes the bank over to bank 1. Remember I was telling you about how you can change from bank 0 to bank 1 and it will um, select a variety of different registers. So over on bank 1, I've just cleared file register 5 as you can see right here. So I went over to bank 1 by setting that bit and I cleared file register 5, which is my way of making everything output on my I.O. port because a, a 0 on a bit represents in an output on that bit. So I've just basically thrown zeros on in the entire um, register 5, which now has created outputs on every single I.O. port. I've run back now over to, by going bit clear file register 035, I've just basically jumped over from bank 1 back to bank 0 right here. Now we're going to do some more typing here. Um, right here, I want to go uh, back. I'm going to find the back button. And I want to type in a label right here. And a label is used for a uh, few things. One of them is you can find a spot that you want to go back to several times. And that's going to be the start of my program. I can always call start and it will go back to start. Or I can go to start, it'll go back to start. So at start, I'm going to simply do a command. And that command is to set our bit set file register 054. So since we're in bank zero, uh, register five is my IO port. And I've just set bit four, or basically turned on my light because a set throws five volts onto that pin, whereas a clear would remove the five volts or make it zero. So I've just turned on the light. Now I'm gonna do a delay call, and you can call this anything you want. I'm calling it delay, you could call it your girlfriend's name, or you could call it anything you want. I've just chosen to call it delay. And over here, I'm going to start building my delay anyhow. So that's going to be my delay. And I'm going to start, I'll just type a little bit of code here. And we will talk about it in a bit. So right there. Um, you can see that um, I'm basically, I set, I turn the light on, I call my delay, so the, the program reroutes down to here, and it starts off, uh, the first statement is decrement file skip if zero. So what this does is it decrements file register 20, and the one just merely means that it throws itself back into file register 20. If I had a zero here, it would throw it into something else, and actually a working register. And then it drops down to right away to the next command, if it's not zero. Um, this statement here, decrement file register, skip if zero is what that means. So if it's a zero in register 20, it will skip the next line and go down to where that cursor is right there. Um, let's say I start off with um, maybe 14 in that register. I don't know. I'm just picking a random number. Um, it will decrement register 20, which has 14 inside it, down to 13. Toss it back into that register 20. And it will look at it and see if it's a 0 or not. If it's a 0, it will jump all the way down to here. If it's something else, it will go to this next line. As you see, I've rigged this thing so it's going to be going back up to here. And every decrement, it's going to keep going back and around and decrementing all the way down to eventually zero. When it gets to zero, it's going to skip all the way down to here. So what this does is it, it creates a delay loop. Um, we're working with 8-bit bytes. Register 20 is an 8-bit byte, so which means, if you know your math, your binary math, 
That's 256 numbers inside an 8-bit byte, which means we're going to do 256 loops before this thing finally falls out, if we start from zero, actually. Because you look at it, you start from zero, you decrement it first, it becomes 256. <laughs> no, 250. Is that right? 255, I believe. Let's see. FF is 255, I think. Yeah. Anyhow, it's going to run through 256 loops right there before it finally falls down to the next instruction, which, by the way, is going to be the exact same thing, except I'm going to make it um, the next register that I, that I want to use. By the way, all the registers that you can use, they start from 20 and they go up to about another 64. I don't know, it goes up to, um, what is it? I don't know, from 20 up to 40 something. It's in hexadecimal, by the way. Um, a lot of times, I assume you understand that I'm talking um, in hexadecimal, which is um, you know, assembler, you know, it's it's um, binary, a 16 bit or 16, base 16 coding, anyhow. Um, so the way this works is it's going to run through 256 loops here, finally fall down and decrement this by one, only one, run back up to the delay, repeat the whole thing again and decrement this by one more. Then it's going to do this loop again and then go down one more less. It's going to do a lot of loops. Actually, it's going to do uh, 16,000 loops maybe. No, is that right? Um, 256 times 256. What is that number? Is that 64,000 or 16,000? I can't remember anymore. Um, it's going to do a lot of loops. You have to do the math. Anyhow, each one of those um, instructions is worth usually one um, machine cycle. I think this one, in, in which case, is worth two when it finally jumps down. But it's basically, you can count these machine cycles as one. It goes one, two, and then a run over is three. Um, yeah, if you like playing with math, that's great. Anyhow, so it's going to do a long, a long amount of running, <laughs> looping, and eventually I'm going to tell it to return from where it came from, which was right up here now. So that is a delay. It creates roughly a quarter second delay and runs back up. And after it runs all the way back up, I'm going to then tell it to clear that same bit in that file register. So again, um, file register five is the IO port and bit four is the one we're working with that has our little LED on it. And I've just turned it off now. And what do you think I'm going to do next? Can you guess it? I bet you can. I'm going to call another delay so I can kill another quarter second or half a second of time and be, so the light stays off for long enough so that you can see it. And of course, um, I'm going to go back to the start. And that's the entirety of my program right there. So it's basically you bank to bank one, set up the IO port, bank to bank zero, register bank zero, and then I proceed to turn on and off a light with a delay of a quarter second, half a second between, and I keep repeating this over and over and over until the batteries finally run out. I could keep the space here in my programming. I tend to like to close it up um, just as a habit. What you do have to do as well at the end of every program is you do have to type in the word end. And the compiler knows that that's the end of your program right there. So that's ready to go. I built it. It's got, like I see, a, a handful of code. And I'm going to compile it using the little hammer right here. Oh yeah, so over here, um, in this split window, there's a little uh, amount of information coming back from the compiler saying, oops, um, it worked. The little green thing says it's a build success. And so now I've compiled it. I want to shove it into that chip or <laughs> download it into that chip. Um, I use this little button here 
and it's going to take it and put it down my USB cable into that little pick, uh, pick kit three into my little chip. I'm going to push this button and I'll have that program stuck in my little chip. Here we go. So it takes maybe about five. Oh, they asked me a question. Do I want to do it? Yeah, that's fine. So we wait for about five seconds and then it says programming verify complete. So that programmed well. Um, let's have a look at what we have down here. We'll check it out. So let's just extend this like this down to here. There's my little chip. I'll pull this out of here. So I'm going to take this little chip and put it over by itself over here. And I'll put my little LED onto uh, pin three, right? Is that what I said? I think I did. Pin three. Put some volt, uh, positive voltage onto pin one. Put some negative voltage onto pin eight. Ta-da! It works. And that's it. Hey, so if you guys like this sort of thing, I will probably build more videos um, if it's of interest to somebody or some people. Um, I probably have content for maybe 50 videos of this sort of thing, a variety of programs, much more complicated than this basic program. Uh, let me know what you think. Anyhow, thanks for your time and enjoy.